welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call. This morning, the Asian markets are slightly subdued because the IMF has cut the global growth forecast. So the SGX 50 is now at the low point, down about three tenths of a percent. Let's see which way things go. We've been singing to our own tune, so let's see whether the bulls continue to have uh, their grip over this market. But our research team is here to give you the list of top ten stocks as we head into trade today. Uh, Anuj, what are you looking at today? Uh, Sonia, uh, Maruti is a stock that uh, I, mean, I think I've mentioned three or four times now in the past few days. Uh, it's up eight percent this month, and it's up fourteen percent from fifty-two week lows. Uh, uh, and the important point is every day it's ending at high point of the day. It's seen consistent delivery based buying. So it's, it's clearly bottomed out. Uh, there's a good likelihood of the stock now moving to its 200 day moving average of 7,800. There's some congestion around 7,300 though. That's a bit of a resistance. And this rally has uh, got some fundamental uh, aspect to it. Uh, uh, it's after first good monthly sales that it reported. Now, I know this morning there's a CS uh, report on the stock. So uh, let's see how that reacts. But uh, uh, my sense is all dips in Maruti will be bought into. The other stock uh, which is showing almost similar trend is Lupin. It's a stock which has stopped falling on bad news. Uh, seen consistent delivery based buying. And per management, you know, FY20 was going to be a big blockbuster year. So it's going to be year of reckoning for Lupin. Uh, let's see. Uh, perhaps... Uh, from the this quarter's numbers, if, if something is really changing, of course, the, this quarter's numbers would still be the last quarter of FY19. But uh, my sense is that uh, you, you should see some more buying in Lupin. Okay. Well, uh, with that, uh, let's get to the big block deal that's going to happen today on HDFC Bank. Nimesh has the details. Yes, Nata. So, you know, there's going to be a big block of close to 1.14 crore shares, which is a half a percent equity of HDFC Bank, uh, which will get executed today on the, on the exchanges. The price been indicated is a 0 to 3 percent discount. So, the stock may open a bit soft in, in the morning trade. But I'm told from uh, bankers that there is a there is enough demand for the, for the deal to go through. Well, the book clearly identifies that there is uh, the, the seller is not uh, a promoted entity or an interested party. What I do understand is one of the large private equity players is going to sell the stake uh, in SDFC Bank today. And it's largely a clean-out trade. So they're selling out the entire uh, stake that they own into SDFC Bank. So once the deal is done, the hangover may get over. But to start with in the morning, you might see a bit of a red take on the, on the fact that there is going to be a big block uh, in SDFC Bank today. Okay, a big block in HDFC Bank today. Thanks a lot for that, Nimesh. Moving on, Wipro is on our radar as the company is likely to, to announce a buyback. Uh, Reema joins in with more on that. Hi, Reema. Hi, Sonia. Good morning. Reports suggest that SEBI has given the green light to Wipro to go ahead with its buyback. It's expected to be a $1.7 billion buyback of 12,000 crore rupees at a price of 320 rupees per share, which is at a 17% premium to where the stock closed yesterday. This would be the third buyback by the company at the largest in 2016, the company had done a 2,500 crore buyback in 2017. It was 11,000 crore, and now we're talking about 12,000 crore. Uh, but CNBC TV18 has not independently verified the news. It cannot vouch for its authenticity, but the buzz in the market is that it's likely to be announced next week with its numbers. All right, uh, Reema, thanks a lot. Uh, now, Wipro ended at highest point yesterday and had big volumes as well. So let's see uh, how much of this news is priced in by the market. Towards the end, there was a big surge. Uh, but uh, Nimesh, interesting action on uh, Z Group stocks. Uh, again, we have a lender selling some stocks. Oh yes, and so, you know, the block deal data in Z Media do suggest that uh, IFC has sold close to 32 lakh shares in Z Media. It's a small, uh, you know, small company, so to speak. Now it's just a 15 rupees stock. But the fact that you know th there is this periodical selling coming in from uh, from the lenders in the Z Group stocks should be a bit of a negative impact on all the all, all the group stocks today. So Z Media will be in red today. But even if you look at other group stocks of Z Group, so Z Entertainment, where the promoter holding is. Uh, close to 40%, uh, uh, there is a large uh, pledge shares there. Even in uh, a Dish TV, where the promoter holding is close to 60%, 82% of that is pledged. So, uh, this will have a bit of a negative impact on uh, not only on Z Media, but I guess on other Z Group stocks as well. Okay. Uh, well, that's important. Uh, thank you very much for that. Now, of course, uh, a story we are tracking every day, Jet's resolution. Uh, there are no takers for Je the lender's stake in Jet on day one. But uh, it's normal that uh, uh, the bids come in on the second day or on the last day, which is today. The SBI-led consortium of banks had invited bids for the airline and the lenders are now planning to sell up to 75% of their stake. Nitu Singh uh, is here to tell us uh, today is the last day, right? 
Jet's fate hangs in balance as the deadline to submit expressions of interest to acquire stake in the airline ends this evening. And as we have been reporting, several private equity players as well as some strategic players could potentially look at bidding for the airline. So we do understand that banks have reached out to the likes of Air France, Delta Airlines already and even Qatar Airways is set to have shown an interest in acquiring stake in the airline. Among private equity players, we have the likes of TPG, Indigo Partners, KKR and even NII as potential bidders. Jet's partner Etihad is also said to be in talks with the lenders to potentially acquire up to 49% stake. But do remember, lenders are looking to sell anywhere between 31 to 75% stake in Jet Airways. But if the bid process is not successful, they may be forced to look at other options like the NCLT to revive Jet Airways. Okay, Rito, thanks a lot. Uh, let's see uh, how that one moves. Uh, it's been very volatile, of course, uh, in BAN as well. Uh, uh, and futures trading at big discount. Uh, Abhishek, uh, why are you watching out for Shiram Transport? Well, news reports suggest that, you know, Shiram Capital may merge Shiram Transport and Shiram City Union Finance. Now, sources tell us that this move is being done to create value for the existing shareholders of Shiram Capital. So, the merger entity will not need additional capital for next one year. So, if you look at the tier one ratio, Shiram City Union Finance is at 23%, while Shiram Transport is close to 15%. Uh, why this merger is being considered is Shiram Transport's uh, borrowings, you know, by bankers has hit a limit, you know, to a single uh, product uh, based NBFC, that limit has been hit. So, if they merge both the entities, you know, the bankers' uh, ability to finance the merged entity will increase because that will become a diversified NBFC. Now, we also understand, you know, Piramal Enterprise may sell its stake in Shiram Transport and Shiram City Union Finance for which it is in talk with KKR for the uh, stake sale in both these entities. We wrote to the Shiram Transport and they have said that this is has uh, this talk has been for a long time. There is no new development while we await comments from Shiram Capital, Piramal and KKR. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Abhishek. So, Shriram Transport, that buzz of the amalgamation continues. But let's move on. Adani Transmission is on our radar. Uh, Nisha is with us to tell us more about that. Hi, Nisha. Morning. Hi, Sonia. Good morning. Well, yes, expected green tick perhaps for Adani Transmission in trade today. That is because we got a note from S&P Global Ratings yesterday. And even though they have kept the rating at triple B minus, they've actually uh, improved or increased the rating when it comes to the outlook to stable. Now, remember earlier this company was put in the credit watch list uh, uh, but now it's been made to a uh, stable outlook. They like the improving financial discipline of the company and they expect that the company's leverage will recover and remain at more than 15% over the next 12 to 24 months. However, they also say that a ratings upgrade is unlikely over the next 12 to 24 months uh, but recently we have seen an infusion of around 800 crores in terms of an equity uh, loan that has been put by the shareholders and that has really improved the liquidity of the company and that's why they have improved the uh, outlook now to stable back to you okay thanks a lot for that uh, uh, anisha that's positive news uh, for uh, uh, adani as well adan transmission as well let's get to voda idea the issue opens today reema uh, yes Sata, the issue opens today it closes on the 24th of April. no i think uh, reema will come back to you we have some audio issue over there uh, we'll get to you in just a minute. Uh, actually, uh, uh, last week, uh, Reema and I spoke with the management of uh, Vodafone Idea. Uh, we spoke to uh, Bali Sharma, the, uh, the CEO and the CFO. So just listen in to what they have had to say and we will get back to Reema in a minute. We have been, we are a very new company. Uh, we've been, uh, since the time we created the company, interacting with analysts, with uh, journalists, but also very importantly with investors existing and prospective. We met them in November, December. We met them again uh, after the quarterly results, so about last month. Uh, great interest. People understand uh, uh, the strengths of the company, the outlook on the market, and uh, very clearly our strategy and support that. Uh, so we have good interest from the investors, for sure. Uh, you, would you agree, Akshay? I mean, especially because Axiata, there was a buzz that uh, they ought to not subscribe. So let me put it this way, that we met investors, both who were existing shareholders and the, some of them who are not shareholders, uh, but they've also been meeting us. And we've seen a keen interest from both categories of investors, both existing shareholders and new investors. Okay. So there's a, there's a strong interest, as Balish was saying, and we met a number of investors in two rounds of roadshows. 
So very, very strong interest. Balish, what was the feedback from uh, the shareholders on the pricing at 12 and a half rupees per share? Uh, because 14 months ago, in February of 2018, when you raised money, it was at 82 and a half rupees. In 2014, it was a price of 134 rupees per share. So shareholders have lost money uh, in the company. So what was the feedback from them on the pricing? So very clearly, well, we haven't gone asking investors or shareholders' opinion on price per se. However, the price has been uh, calculated to keep it attractive for the shareholders so as to uh, give them an opportunity. Uh, as also keeping in mind the industry and the past history of rights issue. Remember, this is the largest rights issue the country has seen. Yes. Uh, but again, the pricing has been with uh, you know, the amount of uh, equity that we are raising versus the existing capital is again one of the largest proportions. And therefore, the price that we see has to be seen versus the turf and not versus the market price. Okay. Because the market price anyway gets diluted by whatever discount you do to come to the turf. And versus turf, it's a discount of 32%, pretty much in line with the, the practice on rights issues. Okay, so that's the biggest uh, fundraising by any company in the Indian markets. Uh, Rima is back with us. Uh, Rima, tell us more details on this rights issue. Well, Sonia, the rights issue opens today. It closes on the 24th of April. The size is 25,000 crore rupees. So, as the management said, this is the largest rights issue done by any company in India's history. They will be issuing 2,000 crore fresh shares at a price of 12 and a half rupees per share, which means a 70% dilution. Of the 25,000 crore rupees, the promoter commitment stands at more than 18,000 crore rupees, which means the company still needs to raise about $1 billion or a little less than 7,000 crore rupees from the minority shareholders. And there, the management sounded very confident about getting that money uh, because they've seen some strong interest from fresh as well as existing uh, shareholders. So the expectation is that this rights issue of 25,000 crore rupees should sail through. The stock is corrected from levels of 32 rupees when the rights issue was announced now to 17 rupees because it is adjusted towards the X rights issue price of about 18 and a half rupees. Okay, thanks a lot, Reema, for that. So that's the list of all the stocks you need to prepare yourself with as we head into trade today.